Would you do that for the Lord with all of your might for just a moment? Because there is a great level of faith in this house here tonight. And we've come for one reason, that is to magnify the Lord together. I can worship Him by myself, but if I can get you to join me, we can magnify Him. So let's do it again. We can magnify the Lord together. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wonderful. Wonderful what I feel in this. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I praise you. I am delighted to be here. And it is a wonderful thing to walk into an atmosphere where you can literally inhale the presence of the Lord out of the air. And you have created that atmosphere here tonight. It's a wonderful thing. There are many things I could do. Ladies and gentlemen, saints, visitors, we're at the end of all of this. Jesus is coming. He really is coming. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day when Jesus comes in the clouds of glory. In the book of Proverbs, Solomon wrote this among a number of things in chapter 22. And he is dealing with revelatory things. But in verse 29, Solomon wrote, and he said, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Then in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, Jesus made a statement in verse 18. He said, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. I want to discuss something to me that is revelatory, and it's very much a part of what God is doing now and will continue to do. And it's not only me, it will, it's you also. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to pray and ask God to help you to do exactly what he wants you to do here tonight. That revelation understanding will come to you. That great faith will rise inside of you. Let your voice out for just a moment. Don't worry about neighbors, people around. It really doesn't matter. Lord Jesus tonight. By the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've gathered together in this sanctuary. Help us to feel the touch of the Master's hand. Help us to hear the sound of your voice. God, walk through the corridors of our hearts and help us to feel the reverberation of the sandal-footed man from Galilee. Bind us together here tonight in one accord. We will not fail to give you praise, glory, and honor. Anoint us now both to hear and to speak. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. We give you praise, O Master of the universe. We give you thanks because you are God. One more time. Clap with all of your might. Clap your hands, all ye people and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph because there is triumph in this house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord bless you, you may be seated. I'm sure that most of you know or have heard that April 22nd, 2015, last year, I was asked to address the General Assembly of United Nations in New York City. How did that happen? How did that come about? 
The United Nations realized that politics are not the answer to the human atrocities and the terrorism in the world in this present hour. So the top leaders at the United Nations decided they would call in 14 of the world's great religious leaders to come and address the General Assembly to try to give some kind of insight, support, or relief from the terrorism and the human atrocities. There were 14 men brought in, and they came from all over the world. They were there from Africa. There were two Cambodian priests high up in that religion from Cambodia. There was a Catholic bishop. There was an Islamic imam. There were two Jewish rabbis and others that I don't recall. But there were 14 of us. <clears throat> Each leader was given 10 minutes to speak to that General Assembly. And uh, I was number 11 because we were arranged in alphabetical order according to our last names. And so the first uh, religious leader got up. <clears throat> What's interesting about this to me is that those religious leaders were there because they were appointed by their kings, queens, or presidents to be allowed to come there. How did I get there? I have a king. I have a king. He is the one that got me there. <clears throat> the first one spoke. I'll be very transparent with you. It was totally boring. Absolutely. And nobody was paying attention. Not even the religious leaders around me. They were texting, working with their iPads. And these speakers, not one of them addressed the issue they were invited there to address. Not one of them stayed within the 10 minute time frame. They all went over and they read these speeches. Boy, it was boring. And no one was really listening. <clears throat> the usher came down to me just before I was to go up to speak and address the General Assembly. He walked up to me and he said, Reverend, he said, um, would you be able to walk up to the podium by yourself? He said, I have to help the aged rabbi down back to his seat. He can't do it by himself. I said, there's no problem. So uh, he was in the process of all that. It was finished in front of me. And then uh, my name was called. When I stood, everything stopped because I prayed. And I know him. A lot of people know about him, but I know him. <clears throat> if that's true of yourself, clap for that honor. Just clap for that privilege. What a blessed people we are here tonight to know what we know, to have an audience with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I basically stepped into the podium and uh, I greeted all of the dignitaries by name and uh, basically bowed to them and then turned to the uh, assembly and said, you're looking at a miracle. I'm not supposed to be here. I said, by all medical knowledge, understanding, I should be dead, but I'm not. I'm alive because of a man called Jesus. And in just a few minutes, probably four or five minutes, I gave them a synoptic review of my whole story about being raised from the dead. People were not moving. You could feel the Holy Ghost. It swept into that general assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, it swept into that general assembly. And at the end, I said, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the answer to the human atrocities in the world and the terrorism is Acts 238. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost.
Mm. Something has walked into this place. Jesus, I worship you. I praise you. Lift your right hand for just a moment and let your voice out one more time. Something apostolic is upon us here tonight. Jesus, Jesus. Otokori hashataya. So at the end of what I just told you, I spoke to them, and then I turned and basically addressed the top individuals there at the United Nations, and I said, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, the answer to the human atrocities and the terrorism in this world is Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. I give you Jesus. I finished in seven and a half minutes. They began to applaud. I walked off. Something happened within the first, first 48 hours after I'd given that address. Three million people had listened to it worldwide. I was told today that within a month, over 12 million people had listened that the answer to the problems in this world terrorism and human atrocities is Acts 238. We've been preaching that for years, but now the world is finding out about it. They're finding out about it. This is the greatest hour we've ever lived in, people. This is our day. This is our moment in time. Now is the time to drop the nonsense, the games, the foolishness, the politics, and get into God like you've never got into Him before, because it's all over. Jesus is about to come. If you believe that, if you want to go in the rapture, clap and just tell him so for a moment. There's no one here but us and Jesus. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you. Mm. I called the secretary to the United Nations. She's secretary to Ban Ki-moon, who is the secretary general. Her name is Alexandra. I said, Alexandra, I want to know something. While I was giving that address, was it translated into other languages? She said, Reverend, while you spoke, your address was automatically interpreted into the six mother tongue languages of the world, Chinese, Arabic, German, Spanish, French, and of course, English. She said, with 2.8 billion people in the world speak one or more of those languages. She said, that's how far your address went. So what I'm saying is, in less than eight minutes, we reached the world with Acts 238. People, we did it. We did it. There's no doubt about it. And they're talking about it everywhere. <clears throat> We are the only apostolic voice that has ever addressed the General Assembly of the United Nations in the 70 years of its existence. They told me that the address I gave has been archived as a permanent part of the history of the United Nations. It will never be removed from the United Nations. It will always be in the archives. So I reiterate, we gave Acts 238 to the world in less than 10 minutes. Africa, people from Africa have called. Raymond Woodward called me from Canada, and he said, Brother Stone King, I just received a phone call from a, a large church group in southern Africa somewhere. He said, they want permission. They have watched your address. They want permission to use it to show to all of their churches in Africa I said, of course, you may do so. Don't worry about it. This is interesting to me. In Bossier, Louisiana, at their general conference, the Assembly of God Church in this country, at their general conference there they had, they played my address to the UN. 
So we gave them Acts 2.38 all over again. We're the most unusual people. Billy Cole made such an impact in Thailand as an apostle to that country that he was told if he had come to Thailand 10 years before he did, Thailand today would not be a Buddhist nation. It would be a Christian nation. The king of Thailand summoned Billy Cole to the palace in Bangkok, and Billy Cole stood before the king of Thailand, who is worshipped as God, by the Thai people, and Billy gave his testimony to that king. His daughter, Brenda, sang for the king's children and entertained them. People, Shirley Cole, while they were in Thailand, Billy told me this crying one day when I was in his home. They had very little, the Thai people had, thai people had very little. So they'd have some kind of a banquet for the Thai people, the leaders and some of the saints there that, where they had won and got converted to the truth. And they would serve a big bowl of rice, one thing, and they had one little chicken leg chopped in tiny pieces, and it would, that was all the meat they would have in the rice because they can't afford more than that. So they were preparing this particular annual luncheon or dinner. And uh, they were stringing up electric lights and Shirley was setting the tables, of course. There were a number of tables there. But um, she had to connect the string of light bulbs to uh, a plug on the other side of this fence. There was a hole in the fence, and the plug where she plugged into the line was beyond that hole. So she just got down and reached through that hole to pull that plug through and make the connection. And when she did, there was a cobra lying there and the cobra struck her in the wrist. In our military, they tell our soldiers, if in the jungles of India, wherever, you are struck by a cobra, you'll be in convulsions in 30 seconds and dead in three minutes. But that book says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. What is his name? Jesus. Shout it for just a moment. She pulled her hand back through. <clears throat> Billy ran on the other side of the fence with some of the Thai men. And Billy said, Brother Strong King, I was shaking so badly, I couldn't even pick up a club to kill the cobra. <clears throat> he said, the Thai men had to cover, kill it. I walked back around the fence. He said, Shirley never stopped. She just kept filling the tables and doing the things she did. The fang marks were there. The hand never swelled. People, this is our heritage. This is who we are. And we've got to wake up to that in this hour and take our rightful position in the world of Christianity because there is nothing out there that can compare with what is inside this place tonight, inside your heart. That ought to cause you to come through the doors every time you come into this sanctuary, shouting the victory, praising God, and forget this world. Forget the ball games and all the nonsense and the shopping centers. People, when we come in here, Jesus is in this house. Angels are in this house. This is where people are delivered. This is where people are saved. This is where people get help. This is where God heals, raises the dead. This is the sanctuary of God. This is the house of the Almighty. So if you're visiting here tonight, that's why we clap for Him. That's why we shout. That's why we dance. And we don't make any apologies to anybody. We've got it, and it has changed our lives. It's worth dancing about. It's worth clapping about. It's worth shouting about, because this is the ultimate experience for any individual in all of humanity. If you believe that, just shout with your voice for a moment. So after that General Assembly closed, there was a press conference. And I had to go to the press conference, of course, and there were photographers and press men and all of this, and so we, it lasted, I don't know, maybe a half hour. 
And there were photographs. Those photographs appeared in the newspapers in New York City. They didn't make the newspapers across the country, but they were all in the New York City newspapers. After that was over, then we had to go to a luncheon, the speakers. There was a luncheon served to us probably on the fourth or fifth floor, somewhere there. So <coughs> we left that press conference, and we began to move toward the elevators to get on to go up to the fourth floor, I think it was. When I stepped on the elevator, Ban Ki-moon was in the corner standing here. And he's the Secretary General. He's one of the most powerful men in the whole world. But there was a space beside him. So I just walked into the space and turned my back against the wall, and he's on my left. He looked at me, he said, and you're still healed, aren't you? I said, yes, yes, I am. So we walked off the elevator. I'm just me. I just do what I do, and what you see is what you get. So we walked off the elevator. I said, Your Excellency, there's more to it. I was also healed of concussion and blood seepage in the brain, but I didn't have time to say that today. And I slipped my arm through his arm, and we walked down that hall to the luncheon arm in arm. That doesn't happen. They don't do things like that. But people, we are missing it. You've got what they need out there. This world is looking for a touch, a human touch, the moving of God, something they've never had before. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain. So <clears throat> we went to this luncheon. It was very unusual, actually. All of us were there, plus uh, a couple of others, dignitaries from the United Nations. They were there, and we were eating, and it was very interesting. I sat here, and the table was along this way and along this way, and, and I could look right there, and there were people, uh, dignitaries and ambassadors on the other side, whatever, leaders, and there, there was the entrance where we came in. Beside me were these two Buddhist monks, head shaved, orange robes, sandals, whatever. And, and I'm eating, and this man on my right, this monk, he watches every bite I eat. And, and I said, you're not eating today? He said, no, I'm fasting. Well, I thought, okay. So I left that and concentrated on other things, basically my food. And I ate it. But then the luncheon came to an end, and people were leaving, dignitaries were leaving. But seated across from me was one of the top three most powerful men at the United Nations. His name is Nasser, Abdulaziz Al Nasser. He is a Muslim. And I knew something about him. I knew something about his wife, Muna. <coughs> he sat right across from me. But I would not talk to him openly, publicly, where others could hear. I waited until there was a chance to do what I wanted to do. So he was standing at the do exit door there and greeting various people that were going out, leaders, spiritual leaders. And so I walked around, and um, at that time, a lot of them had gone through. They would passed by him. I walked up to him and I shook his hand and I said, Your Excellency, I know about your wife, Muna, having cancer. I prayed for her this morning and I wanted you to know that. <laughs> he looked at me, squeezed my hand. He reached inside his coat pocket and pulled out his business card with his cell phone number, personal numbers on it and gave it to me. That doesn't happen. They don't do that. There are people standing in line to get an audience like that, to get a business card from them. I stood in no lines except his line. If God opens a door, 
I want to tell you something. Before this is over, some of us are going to be so mightily used by God, you can hardly believe what is just looming in your, in your future. Yet something is beginning to walk toward our people. Something is happening, people. Something is taking place among us. I've had the Holy Ghost 52 years, but there's something going on now that I've never felt before. There's something pulling at me. There's something pulling at you. Something is happening. It's the most exciting hour that man has ever lived in. And we are alive. We are that generation. So I thanked him and I walked on. Later, I called him on his personal number and reached him and uh, I told him, I said, we have, I belong to an organization that has a world network of prayer. And I said, there are thousands and thousands of people worldwide that are connected to that network of prayer worldwide. I said, I'm an apostolic Christian. I said, I want your permission, Your Excellency, to give your wife's name to this world network of prayer. I will not give the last name. I only will give the first name, but I don't want to do that without your permission. He said, you have it. I gave the name. Long story short, she's been healed of cancer. As that finished, then after that we walked out, the secretary to Ban Ki-moon, Alexandra, came to me. She said, Brother Stone King, do you know who Rabbi Jonathan Kahn is? I said, yes, of course. I said, he's one of my favorite preachers to listen to. He's like an Old Testament prophet. He doesn't care what anybody thinks. He just spits it out. He wrote the book, The Harbinger, and all of that. She said, he wants to meet you. I said, fine. He said, she said, he wants to meet you by way of Skype. I said, fine. I said, but I have to know what time because I have other commitments here at the UN today. She said, I'll find out. She came back about 30 minutes later and she said, he's changed his mind. He doesn't want to meet you by way of Skype. He wants to meet you personally. And he's only an hour drive from the UN, so he's driving now from northern New Jersey into Manhattan and coming directly to the UN. I said, fine. And so we went. <coughs> Long story short, we went to another floor right behind the wall that, that goes around this huge General Assembly auditorium. It was a lovely room, and I walked in there with Alexandra and Brother and Sister Art Wilson were in there also. And we sat there for, a, I don't know, a while, and uh, we'd done other things prior to this, all of a sudden, the call came that uh, the rabbi had arrived, and security is extremely tight at the United Nations, so you can't get in there unless you have someone to help you get in. And for a short period of time, I had a presidential pass to go in and out of the UN, which means I didn't have to stand in any lines, didn't have to ask anybody any questions. I just flashed that card and went straight through. It's pretty amazing, don't you think? I mean, if God does it, He does it well. He does it well. But He didn't have a presidential pass. I did. So Alexander went down and got him through security. I'll never forget this. All, we waited for a couple, two or three minutes, whatever it was, and all of a sudden the door opened and in walked Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. And I'm... I just like him. I, I just, I like to hear him. I've watched him online. I've cried, clapped, and cheered him on. He didn't know that, but I just was involved with what he was doing. So I walked over to him. He was standing there like this. And I walked over and grabbed his crossed arms, and I said, I said, Jonathan, I am so delighted to meet you. I said, you are an incredible individual. I said, it is just a pleasure to meet you, and I want you to know that. I said, you are something, man. Well, he's just staring at me. See, but that's who I am, okay? If I like you, I like you. 
If I don't, I keep my distance. I'm polite, but I keep my distance. Well, at that point, he sat down. He's here about five feet away from me in a chair. The Wilsons are here. Alexandra's here. <clears throat> and um, the rabbi sits down, and this is what he says. We've got to get back to Acts 2.38. I, I didn't believe I heard him right. This, this man is Jewish. He's a rabbi. He said again, he said, we've got to get back to Acts 2.38. He said it three times. At that point, Art Wilson had just recorded his iPad, my address to the General Assembly. Art Wilson said, he said, Rabbi, it's interesting you're saying that. Reverend Stone King just addressed the General Assembly. Here's his message. And he opened it, and the rabbi sat there and watched the whole message about Acts 2.38. It was amazing. It was just amazing. When Art shut the iPad off, the rabbi looked at me and said, this is timely. He said, I need a miracle. I've got something wrong with my thyroid gland. I've got to have a miracle. I said, well, we'll lay hands on you and pray, and God will heal you. I said, but before we do that, I want to ask you a question. I said, have you been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? He said, yes. I said, next question. When they baptized you in... In Jesus' name, did they, when they put you under the water, did they say, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? He said, yes, they did. I said, next question. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues since you believed? He said, yes, I have. I said, now it's time to pray. Please stand. He stood, and I put this hand on his chest and this hand on his back, and the Holy Ghost fell. That dude burst out speaking with tongues. I mean, he spoke with tongues all over that place. I mean, he was just pouring out of him, just literally pouring out of him. Jesus. I've kept in contact with him uh, somewhat, and I got word not a few months ago, he's been healed. The thyroid gland is all right. That's Jesus. That's the only kind of Jesus I'm going to serve. That's the only kind of Jesus I'm going to preach. That's the only kind of Jesus I'm going to follow. People, this thing is either real or it's not real. We either have it or we don't have it. I'm here tonight to say, we have it! It's alive inside of us. I want to point this out to you. Is it not interesting to you? But before I make that statement, let me say this. The top most powerful men, eight of them at the United Nations, signed off on me, wanting me to be the spokesman for the Christian Protestant element. Ban Ki-moon particularly pointed at my name and said, I want him. That's how I really get in there. It's, it's just amazing. It's, it's powerful what God is trying to do. Not with just me, but with you. I don't know where this thing's going to end with me. It doesn't really matter. I just want to do everything I can before the coming of the Lord. I want to be in the rapture. People, I've been praying, Jesus, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to disappoint you. I don't want to embarrass you. I want you to help me to do what's right. You've got to help me to do what's right. People, we cannot miss the rapture. I mean, God forbid, we can't miss the rapture. It's the most important thing in your life. We can't miss it. So is it not interesting that when the United Nations, one of those powerful forces in the whole world, wanted a Christian voice among the Buddhists, the Muslims, etc., that they did not choose famous TV televangelists, which they could have. They chose an apostolic oneness Christian. 
That is a miraculous thing to me. I posed this to Jesus. I said, how is it? And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, the spotlight, my spotlight has moved from the Trinity world upon my oneness people. The spotlight is now upon us. People, it's now or never for us. If we miss this, we've missed it all, and it won't come back. This is our moment in time. They're talking about Acts 2.38 all over the world. This is our moment in time. This is our moment to stand up in the community and say, yes, I'm one of them. Yes, I'm baptized in Jesus' name. Yes, I speak with tongues. Yes, there's only one God. Yes, I believe in holiness. Yes, I believe in separation from the world. This is our moment in time. This is our moment in time because the spotlight is upon us. Tap your hands again just for a moment. Let your voice out. If you've got the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost speak through you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's astounding to me that while our government no longer will allow chaplains in the armed services to pray in the name of Jesus. They have banned it. Did you know that? Christian songwriters, according to Karen Harding, told me that Christian songwriters are gathering together in groups trying to decide whether or not they should actually use the name of Jesus in their choruses and the new songs they're writing. They want to take the name of Jesus out. You know why? That's where the power is. The power is in the name. The power is in the name. The power is in the name. And they want to obliterate it. I've made up my mind. I'm going to shout Jesus louder than I've ever shouted. I'm going to pray in restaurants in Jesus' name. I am not backing off. They are not going to stop us. They will not stop us. If you feel like that, you ought to be on your feet cheering for this Jesus. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the savior. He is the brother. He is the peace. He is the joy. He is the sanctuary. He is bread when I'm hungry. He is drink when I'm thirsty. His name is Jesus. Shout that name for just a moment. Do it again. One more time and clap when you do it. Jesus, we worship you tonight because you are God. I just got word today before I came here from Pastor Art Wilson. He said, Brother Stone King, he said, I haven't been able to talk to you, but I want to tell you what's going on. He said, that UN address you gave is all over Africa and it's all over the Middle East. I got word today from the Republic of Georgia that they have translated your message into their languages and it's being circulated through all of their people. The whole world is talking about it. The whole world is talking about it. I I do not fly Delta Airlines that much. I really don't. I have two million miles with United, the 1K status, but I don't go on Delta unless United doesn't go there. That's basically how I operate. But I had this one meeting to go to, and I had an unused Delta Airline ticket that I'd cancel, I had to cancel something. <coughs> so I had to use it before the year expired. So I decided I would use this ticket to go to a meeting I do in Tennessee. So I called them and they arranged it and everything was fine. I got to the airport in Albany and uh, checked in at Delta, went through security, I went to the gate and sat there. And of course, I have num I'm number one to the list, of the group number one to board. So they called number one and for some reason I was busy doing something, on a, what, making a call or something. I didn't get up right away, but when I did get up, <coughs> several other groups had gone through. 
But when I walked on the plane, and I don't fly Delta, so these people don't know me, I don't know them that much at all, except downstairs at the desk in the airport. There's a very attractive uh, woman, probably about 30, 35, maybe not that old, blondish hair, lovely smile, and she was greeting everyone that stepped on the plane. Well, when I stepped on the plane, she smiled and greeted me. She said, welcome aboard. I said, thank you. And I turned and walked down the aisle, and I had the window exit row seat, which is at least halfway or two-thirds of the way back on that plane. And so I just got in my seat and got everything adjusted, and, and by that time, people were all buckled in and ready to go. I happened to look up, and this flight attendant was walking down the aisle, and I knew in the Holy Ghost she was coming to me. I, could, I, I knew it in the spirit. Sure enough, she stopped right here. There was a man seated beside me. She stopped right there, <clears throat> and she said, should I know you? I said, well, it's possible. I said, I just addressed the General Assembly uh, at the United Nations. She said, that's it. You're Lee Stone King, aren't you? I said, yes, yes, I am. But this time, the whole plane is listening. She said, it's in Acts 2.38. It's in Acts 2.38. She's preaching. I'm just listening. I mean, it was, it was amazing. What I'm saying is the message is out. The message is out. The message is out. When Delta Airlines stewardess know about Acts 2.38 and confirming it, there's no telling where this is going to go. Because when you talk about him, he comes. When you begin to preach his message, he comes. You get everybody talking about Acts 2.38, revival will break out like this world has never known because it's the only truth. It's the only truth. It is the only truth. It is the only truth. It is the only truth. This is that. Another that is not coming. <clears throat> well, then, I, about a, three or four weeks later, I went back and went on United. And I had just checked in. I took my luggage. I was turning to go to the gate. And some man I've never seen before walked out and said, You're Lee Stone King, aren't you? I said, Yes, yes, I am. He said, I heard your address on the UN. He said, May I have a picture with you? I, I said, okay. So I stood here, people are taking pictures. It's unbelievable. I was just in California, went through TSA security there. When I got to the agent, the man there, he said, you're Lee Stone King, aren't you? I said, yes, yes, I am. He said, I watched your address. <laughs> people. This is our day. I want to tell you that at this point, at the last few days ago, we now have baptized 30 delegates at the UN in Jesus' name. 30 of them have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Something wants to fall on you right now. There's a pulling of the Holy Ghost for you to make some kind of a commitment between yourself and God that you will get into this like you've never got into it before. So at this moment in this service, I rebuke the spirit of fear upon every individual that is here. I rebuke the spirit of intimidation upon every human being that is here. Let holy boldness come upon every believer in this audience. On this platform, every preacher, that something will fall upon you, an anointing like you've never, ever had before. If you welcome that, if you welcome that, then lift both hands to the Lord and just let your voice out because something is falling upon you as a people. I've been coming to this church for years, but something is falling upon you as a people. This thing needs to get out. You can shake this city. You can shake this city. Oh, 
I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight to invite you to a higher calling, a higher dedication, a deeper dedication. That's why I'm here tonight. God is counting upon us. We are the generation upon whom the ends of the world have come. If you can feel that, if God has just touched you and you know he's going to do it for you, I want you to run to this altar and just throw your hands in the air and just let your voice out and shout the victory and receive it. Receive it. Receive this holy anointing. Receive this authority. Receive this fearlessness in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. That's it. That's it. And I pray you're never going to be the same people. When you utter those words, I receive it, you're never going to be the same because you can never be the same again. <laughs> That's it. Just let your voice out. Seek him while he may be found. That's it. That's it. Let your voice out. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon his name. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, we are your people. We are your people. <laughs> Because of what I've just told you about them trying to obliterate the name of Jesus with what is on you right now, with what you're feeling right now, I think as a tribute to this God, this wonderful Jesus, that every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in this audience ought to throw both hands in the air and just shout the name of Jesus. Jesus. That's it. That's it. Do it one more time. The world needs to hear it. This world needs to hear it. Jesus! Jesus, I praise you in the name of Jesus. Of the name of the Lord Jesus. Of the name of the Lord Jesus. There are, there are miraculous things happening. There's anointing falling upon many people here tonight. An anointing of authority. An anointing of an authority as a believer. An anointing as a, as a believer. An authority. So with that authority that's on you right now, with that authority that's on you right now, I want you to turn to someone as if you're a believer here tonight and get a hold of somebody and begin to command in Jesus' name. And when you do it in the name of Jesus, people will be healed. People will be delivered. Minds will be changed. Not because I am who I am, but because Jesus is who he is. Oh, that's it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Bataka Shataka. Jesus. Aloka Shataka Shata. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. I command wholeness in your body right there. I command wholeness in your body. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Handle of Adesh, Lova Raka, 
Pato Karesha Daiha Varaka. It's happening, people. It's happening. Not because of me, but because of you. That's it. That's it. Rohata Keshata. Hata Karesha Tata Keshata. Honda Hata Kateresha Daiha. Yata Lovaraka Shataya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Upon this choir, God, I pray, authority, the anointing of God, the reality of Jesus. That's it. Just let your voice out. Just let your voice out. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Jesus. 